Hey guys, so we're going to talk about form and design in this one as it relates to hard surface shapes. So a lot of you guys are going to run into this issue. You load up Blender and you're faced with the uh, default cube. And, you know, maybe you, you even work on this thing instead of deleting it, but you might, you know, get box cutter, turn it on and, you know, start trying to create the things that you, you know, you want to create the visions you have in your head, right? And what ends up happening, though, is that as you work on this more and more, it just, it doesn't seem to go right. Like, you can make all the cuts you want. You can work on it for quite a bit. And then just nothing kind of lines up. It's something off about your model. And this is usually because, you know, um, these are the forms you're creating, perhaps, right? That's our fundamental to create forms. But how do you create form? You have to design it, right? And so that's what this video is about. We're going to talk about relations here as it comes to aligning things and uh, coming up with some basic ideas for hard surface shapes anyways. So we're going to head over to Krita real quick. We'll do a little 2D sketching because it's just a little bit faster than trying to model all that. And so let's just start with the uh, the most basic idea here, like uh, kind of like we're seeing in the 3D scene. Like what's what's the difference between a refrigerator and a vending machine? Not a whole lot. They're about the same rough shape and uh, there's just little minor differences on the uh, on the surface there for the most part. So when you look at your overall shapes, you know, think of them in the bounding box area, right? The, um, the depth, the width, the height, all that fun stuff. Think about these areas and start thinking about how you can break these up, okay? The total aspect of the, the shape, but not just that. Think about each edge you might create or even a sub edge. So just like a segment of an edge, perhaps like this area. Okay, you're gonna break these up at different rates, basically. So when you create an edge, we're going to need a couple of these, but you can think of it as like a zero to 100% for that whole edge. You cut it in half, you cut that in half, you'll end up with 25%, 50%, 75%, right? If you just cut it in half, obviously you would end up with a zero, a 150%. Uh, but you can use other ratios as well here. So if you cut it into thirds, you guessed it, you're going to get 33.3333 and 66.6666%. And that'll be your thirds there, right? And this is in quarters. Okay. And um, you can use other ratios yet still. So if you want to do something like a 10% um, a on each side, you would end up with 10 and 90, something like that. And yet you can still do things different than that as well. So you could do, say, 10 and then maybe do like a um, a 30 and then just leave it there. So you'll end up with 0, 10, 30, and 100. And you've seen this one before. This is 10% in this area. This is going to be 20% in this area. And this is 70% in this area. So you'll see that mentioned in quite a lot of videos. If you've ever worked on a um, 2D image and you're trying to create composition, whether it's photography or render or whatever the case, uh, a lot of times you remember that you might be working in thirds or the... Um, Composition will be set up in thirds, right? So you'll have the ability to put your subjects at these little third points in these areas, perhaps, right? Maybe one at a time. You could put the whole subject along a third, something like that, right? So the rule of thirds, quite useful. But when you're doing graphic design, remember, you're doing a lot of things like center alignments, right? So you might align something to the center. You might even offset it from the center a little bit. You could do it in any of these little corners, perhaps. Okay, but you can also align to all the corners as well. So you can do a section there, section here, put a box over here on the left side. You can see where that's going, right? A lot of ideas here on how you can arrange things. And so you can even give them a little bit of spacing perhaps. Now, if this was a whole face here, let's just say we're going to do an inset and we just want to reduce the whole face, but you know, keep the shape and we want like an edge flow through here or something like that later on. Uh, we could reduce it by percentages as well. And so this is actually what we're looking at over here, like say this 10% reduction here. So it reduces maybe 10% on each side. So it'll be a total of a 20% reduction um, combined. But if, from this edge, it'll be 10%. And it'll do that in all the different edges as well. Uh, but just like when you're working on UI elements in something like uh, Unity or Unreal Engine, or you're working at graphic design programs, a lot of times you can use anchor points. And so your anchor points could be in those corners, perhaps. And you might want to scale in 10% to that anchor point right there, right? 
So that shape's going to move all the way kind of into that area there. Now you can, of course, do this kind of stuff in Blender as well, but you actually actually have to really think about doing it in Blender because there's no like tools for it per se. Like you can use the 3D cursor to make things like this happen, but it's not there by default. And so you're going to run into this issue where while you're trying to 3D model things, you're not thinking about these kinds of things as you're creating your shapes, right? And so if I was to take that and do an inset to 50%, that's something I could do as well. And then I can also reduce it even further, like so, okay? And then, so let's say we have a center aligned shape here, like a big rectangle, okay? That's what it would look like. It's center aligned, it's on that center shape there. You don't necessarily keep that center line later on. You could just leave it kind of hanging out in free space. So you have positive and negative spaces to think about as well. And so we can also vary that too. We can align, say, to the left or to the right. And we can do this over here as well. We can center align here, or we can align to the right, or we can align to the left. We can do that on every one of these, including the tops and bottoms as well, right? So this is why you're getting so confused by design in general. You're not thinking about this in this manner, perhaps. And so another thing I like to point out is there's different plane levels, right? So think about like the Olympics or something, you know, you got your first place and your second place and your third place. So you can have different plane levels throughout a shape as well. And this can draw importance to certain things. Think of like a, um, you know, think of like a king or something sitting at the top of a, um, a little place up here. And he's just chilling. But you got like different levels, you know, you got like your peasants and then your kingsmen. And then now you got your king way up here, right? And so it's a hierarchy to things potentially as you're creating uh, shapes. So you could think of everything as like in positive or negative space, your plane levels, like maybe there's a base plane or a ground plane level, and you can go up or you could go down as well, right? And you can do however, however many different planes you want, uh, which could be quite useful. But when you're doing hard surface shapes, a lot of times, you know, you might be creating those cubic kind of shapes here. and the plane levels can be quite important. You know, you might start stepping things down at some point and doing things like this, so like a big top plane. But whatever's up here is going to kind of get an importance to it that otherwise wouldn't exist on perhaps, you know, the other parts of this, um, this model. And so you can start working those kind of ideas into uh, your designs, really, and just kind of running with it a little bit. Is there, is there a more importance to this being up here at this point, perhaps, right? And that's kind of a weak example of it, but it's still the idea still remains, right? All right, so with that out of the way, let's go through this real quick. This right here is kind of important. You know, when you look at this cube, like what do you do to start making it look more interesting? You know, maybe break it into thirds, break this one into quarters. You can start playing connect the dots, basically, all right? And in these areas, if I can draw the right shape, in these areas, you can do like 10% reductions, perhaps. If you wanted to and add a vent, you could create negative space by putting some pretty big spacing between the like vent areas, perhaps. Uh, but you can also make this just something simple, like a little area where some buttons exist, perhaps. Uh, maybe we do a cut at the quarter down here, right? And maybe we run it all the way through. Uh, maybe we can get away with something like that. Maybe that's something we want to do. Maybe we do a 10% cut all the way through here and all the way around. You know, but maybe we don't want that running all the way through either. Maybe we get rid of that, you see? And now we can build the illusion of that existing by maybe doing an edge through this area, you see? Okay, so that whole edge doesn't go all the way through. We just have like a little extra vent down there or something. But now we can see what we're kind of creating here. It looks more or less like a, um, a computer case, right? So that's the differences between a... a a refrigerator and a vending machine. They're literally just small little shape changes that happen throughout the uh, the design of the uh, the object there. Now also keep in mind, one other thing I wanna mention is that you don't stick to these, like they're, they're magnetic. Uh, you vary these slightly, okay? It's always gonna look nicer if you just vary them a little bit different and just uh, change them up quite a bit. Uh, so eventually I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm going to turn on um, Lazy Nozumi, so I have some brush smithing. I haven't had any brush smithing on, I don't think, yet. Let's see. I'll do some brush smithing. Yeah, now it's on. Okay, cool, because it's a little choppy. Uh, so when you're doing a design now, whatever design it is, 
you know, I highly recommend learning to just kind of sketch in isometric views or orthographic views. So orthographic being flat side views. Isometrics have no perspective to them. They don't have uh, vanishing points, right? They don't go out to a little converging point. It's all parallel lines and they're all the same size. So it's like a, um, a non-perspective 3D view, basically. Uh, when you start designing whatever it is you want to design, you know, start varying it up with different shape changes, however you choose fit. Um, you can start making out different little shapes and take these and drop them later on, these layers, and do some really careful thought experiments on like how you want your your shapes to be designed, okay? And start thinking about how you're going to work these out because at some point you're going to create bevels more than likely. And you could just draw a little square in the corner and you can figure this is going to be the top half of the bevel and put a, a circle in it and then that's going to be the top half of the bevel and then you got the um, the sides here basically become the bevels. So we can go ahead and erase that later on. We don't need it necessarily. We could do things like that. Um, we can work them back the other way as well. Something like this, perhaps. Okay, and personally, I don't do that technique. There's other techniques you could use. I just like drawing double lines usually. And then you can like round out a corner here, round out a corner here. You can kind of see where that one goes, right? Very quick and easy to do that one too. So it's like doing Korean bevels when you're doing sub B modeling. Right, anyway, so you get through that whole shape and before you know it, you, you have your bevels going. You can add some more bevels back here perhaps. And you just keep going with these ideas, basically. So, you know, you work out your your designs, how you want them to look here in 2D. You're going to have a much easier time, even if it's a little bit rough looking by the time you get over to 3D, because you're basically pre-planning out your designs at this point, right? And so, you know, you take these back down later on, perhaps, and you keep adding little additional, you know, you do different uh, variations on whatever it is you're trying to create. If you want to do like a little vent here, maybe you just want to do some panel lines that come in. And drop in a little bit here uh, that might be something you might want to do and so you just keep playing with these ideas over and over and over again also you could try just using a fat marker that's like um you know lower lower opacity perhaps um or on a new layer and i, I personally use a new layer 100 percent. but uh, you could try sketching with this thing you can also use grays and you can start sketching out ideas of like hard surface shapes really fast and change the tones a little bit kind of get your shapes going so you have kind of like three different tones you might be working with like maybe the top one's a little bit lighter and the side ones are a little bit more gray and this is a fun way of coming up with hard surface shapes really fast because you're basically kind of digital painting uh, but this isn't this isn't the final obviously this is kind of like a little guide for yourself and it's a way to create accidental shapes and shape changes that just might look good and so you never know how these will turn out until you do it. And I just keep playing around with the ideas and just moving, moving with it. Uh, you can get, you know, really crazy with it and do more organic looking stuff too, like very fast and just start seeing what you can come up with here. Do a little bit of grays. And this is your guide, guys. You turn this down, you go into a new layer, you use that hard round brush again. Now you can start to think about like how you want to, you know, maybe break this shape up and create another guide on top of this, perhaps. All right. You can do these little shape changes all over the place. And uh, just see what you can get going, basically. It's a lot of fun, actually, to uh, do this. So you have to use a little bit of imagination on what's going to be cut and where and how and why. And you need to be thinking about those percentages all the way through as well. Like if it's kind of boring at 50%, maybe change it a little, you know. Maybe move it a little further forward, perhaps. You know, don't draw draw exactly what you see. Just use it as a guide. Um, and then you can start doing things like that super fast, right? I kind of did some videos on this before, but it's um, it's an extremely effective technique in my opinion. So it's definitely one worth checking out and learning. If you see an edge you like, you know, you can always take these and start working them out into um, new kind of shapes wherever you need them or whatever. And uh, start playing with those designs, guys. That's really, that's what it comes down to. You just got to get them going and start making them happen, okay? Um, this one would be a little bit odd, I think. I think I'd have to push it in like a taper on the inset there. Anyways, so you might end up with paradoxes as well. You'll have to solve those, of course. All right, with all that out of the way, I just want to point out something. You don't have to work in just Krita. You don't have to work in just Blender. There's other programs like Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer. That same idea, that tower there that I had started with, um, it's a very simple idea, right? 
the concept there, the uh, the layout. So if you were to just create that front face in something like uh, Affinity Designer here, it's very simple to do this kind of stuff. You can literally just create shapes really fast. And if you want, you can add corners to them, do things like that, or you can use like the corner tool. And then suddenly what you'll realize is adding small little changes, like this could have been a computer tower, and then you round out some of the edges, you add some cameras on it and a little extra detail, and, and it's the same layout. And then now it's a cell phone or whatever, whatever else you want to create. And so when you're working in Blender and you're looking at these default shapes here like this, like you're thinking like, you know, yeah, they're cubes, but how do I make them you know, look somewhat believable? It's all about the proportions and the layout because you see, you see this is broken up into basically quarters. This is inset a little bit in this area. So it's like a 10% reduction. Uh, this bottom shape here doesn't actually line up to the, uh, the window area. It lines up to the whole overall shape which is kind of a misalignment. Maybe that doesn't look as uh, good aesthetically. You might, you know, offset this to line up with the left side. So it's kind of like a, um, a two side split here as well. So you're thinking about like page layout when you're doing graphic design for websites and things like that. Um, this is kind of the same idea here where, you know, you're not necessarily, um, if it would stop letting me, okay, there we go. Finally got it working. You can use a line tool over here as well if you want. And I have this set to surface and you can change the options here on how this thing works. Uh, but you could do a line through here. So you could say that this is only like a 20% section over here, right? Perhaps like 20% there. And this is the, the rest of the, uh, the shape here. Where is this drawing at on the back? Okay. Um, maybe it's like 20% for the most part. So usually when you draw, you can set it to surface. And it'll show up through the um, the object. You can change this button here and turn that off if you don't want that kind of behavior. But this is a great way to just kind of annotate what you want to do and how you want to uh, create things. Because, you know, even though we've blocked out the main shape here for the most part in some of these secondaries, we still have to figure out the tertiary details as well, right? The third details. And so, look, if we split this something similar, uh, maybe we have a big screen up here, perhaps. Uh, maybe we have a big panel with buttons in here. There's all kinds of buttons that you can press or something. And then maybe there's like a credit card swiping system right next to that or something. You see what I'm saying? And so you have to start getting in this mindset of like breaking things down in these different values here. You can also set up little spacers as well, where like, you, you know, you just set up a little bit of a spacer in there perhaps. So it's not a completely solid shape all the way through. And then maybe this is like a little mechanical maintenance box or something that uh, someone can get into there. And sometimes it's hard to see these. You can change the colors to whatever you want. And so you can see where that's going. You can start imagining, you know, you're going to create chips in here or whatever else. Also, you can set this to um, 3D cursor. And so you can shift right click if you wanted to. So like if you just want to draw a bunch of potato chips or something in here, go to an orthographic view while ordering. Hold, hold. You, can, you can actually place those kind of in a 3D space as well which is kind of fun. You can also use the grease pencil. You don't have to just use the annotate tool. The annotate tool, I've had issues in the past where it would kind of like lose your drawing, um, but that's not always the case, okay? And so um, it doesn't always do that. I haven't had it happen every time, but it has happened before, so I just want to mention it. Um, yeah, and anyways, there you go. So, you know, you can go around, do some sketching, kind of figure out what you're going to do with these shapes or these designs. You know, start marking marking what you need out of it. Like if you forgot to do something, you know, mark mark the um, the error that you accidentally created, perhaps, and then that way you'll know to come back to it. You know, make it like red or something, and um, you can figure out like how your breakout is breakup of the uh, shape is going. So this cubes in the way. Let's get rid of it real quick. You can think about like how this breakup looks overall. Like what's the main lines here? Um, you can see it's it's not too bad, but it could probably be a little bit better, right? So it's kind of a weird uh, distribution, perhaps, of these different shapes. And so, you know, keep those kinds of things in mind as you're working on objects. Also, let's talk about detail cramming real quick, because I didn't really talk about it in some of the other videos. There's different, detail cramming is actually uh, clustering, okay? There's different ways to cluster. You can do like shapes to cluster. You can do groups of like shapes that have um, different, ways of just being combined together uh, or distributed. And that distribution can take or have a big effect on the importance of certain things, right? So I did talk about this a little bit. 
but in a previous video. But you can figure if you're filling this with a bunch of details later on, little things like this can add up, right? Like you can just have kind of like flows and things that work in certain areas as well that line up with the overall composition of everything. And uh, but you can do compound shapes too. So these are just clusters that are that are separate. Um, you can do kind of like asymmetrical clusters, right? And this is something you need to take a look at. It's actually pretty cool. It's quite good um, to study this one. But you can do like little asymmetrical clusters, non-uniform sections. But then you can also do um, compounds, right? Compound shapes. So you can start combining shapes together to create clusters in this manner as well. Okay, and that's how you're going to fill in some details in these little crevice areas, usually, um, if this is one where you want to like kind of compound everything together, if you would. So you start doing this number, maybe create other shapes too, you know, do cylinders or whatever the case. And, you know, just start filling in the areas where you want all that detail. In this case, potato chips would probably work out quite well in this area. But um, yeah, so, you know, don't feel so lost when you're working with... Um, Box cutter now, you can see all my different cutters just popped in, but let's take this one. And if we were using it, you can start thinking about where you're gonna play, place all those different cuts now. A lot a lot easier anyways, cause you'll be able to be like, hey, I need this at, um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe like 10%, 10% on each side, all the way through the shape perhaps. You know, that's something you could do depending on what you're working on. And maybe later on you wanna, break it into thirds and you want to take this section in this section press i to inset i again to inset uh, individuals we do that once inset again hold control you can see where that's starting to go you can play with the positive and negative spaces now you can have a little bit of fun with it you know we can figure out what we're trying to do here basically maybe we want to split this one as well so uh we can modify it i guess and you see, like when we're moving this, we could put these up to like the third, maybe, or we could pull these down to the third, or maybe we just get rid of those entirely or something. I don't know. There's all kinds of fun stuff we can do here. So if you got to create like lockers or any kind of hard surface shapes like that, it becomes quite useful to know this stuff. Okay. And when things get a little bit more complicated is, um, you know, more like uh, purposeful mechanical pieces, perhaps, because a lot of stuff can just happen with these things. Like you never know where they're going to end up when you're doing different shapes. And uh, you really have to think about these designs a little bit when working on other shapes that are um, maybe not so simple as uh, a cube, perhaps, right? And so this is gonna take quite a bit of practice to get used to this. Just kind of doing extrusions out like this, maybe doing little tapers in area, uh, tapering an edge, perhaps, like over here. Might need to do a uh, limit dissolve at some point. Set to 0 0.05 for now. A M merge by distance, and then I should be able to select um, all by trait interior faces and X and delete those because I accidentally created an error apparently. And I'll symmetrize it, merge it again. Okay, so uh, eventually you'll add some things like bevels, perhaps. You can see sometimes the bevels cause a little bit of confusion, and this is where you're probably usually running into issues, right? As you're working, you're trying to think about how to solve these issues with bevels and all these other fun things. And you really shouldn't be. You should be focusing on design. So, you know, think about that as you're working. Let's get a, um, a new cube over here, perhaps. And that way I can use that as a cutter. So if I want to start doing some cuts, I can do that. And so now we're starting to think, like, you know, as we're working on a shape, what are we doing here? You know, like, what is the what is the composition here for this overall section? If we're doing thirds, well, we kind of missed the target of the third on that that one section there not that you can't do that you could leave that like that if you wanted but it might look better if we just moved it forward a little bit something like that perhaps or maybe we do like the uh the 10 and then we do like a um a 50 right or something like that as well we can switch things around and change them up however we see fit um, and just start getting the things going that we want going basically you can see like maybe we can run this shape all the way through um something like that as well you know, that's a possibility. There's nothing that says we can't do things like this. And so you're not just working with that composition in the top view, obviously. You have to work with composition in the side views. And this is why doing 3D shapes can be quite challenging because you're looking at a lot of stuff here, potentially, just to work with. Um, 
you know, we're not quite at halfway here, which is kind of good. I kind of like that. And it's kind of like doing fonts, you know, when someone's creating a font, um, they're, they're not, let's just say they're doing an S, you know, they're, they're not making perfectly, you know, like half circles always. A lot of times they're just kind of scripture or script like. And so you can see, you can change the depth of things whenever you want, really. And there's no right and wrong answers here. Okay. So you're doing that same kind of concept on, on these pieces over here. Like you can change them to whatever ratios you need. There's no definitive, like correct answer. As long as it looks aesthetic, it looks pleasing. You'll, you'll be doing all right for the most part. And so something even as simple as this right now, you know, you could, you could just keep working it if you want and, you know, create a cube, maybe bring it out to the side and let's just pull out one edge. Control B, bevel it, hit C to clamp it. Mouse will up, A, and merge by distance. J to auto smooth, so we can create like a little pill shape. And now we can maybe cut, you know, that shape into there perhaps. Maybe we want to even um, array this thing out uh, a little bit. Maybe we want to scale it down. You see where that's going. So we can start creating repetitions and patterns. We can start exploring positive and negative spaces perhaps and just getting things going, right? Um, and if you need a better explanation of a positive and a negative space, just think of this one here, I think. It's probably one of my favorites. Um, when you're looking at maybe the surface of a, um, of a cabinet or a um, piece of furniture, a lot of times it might look something like this. And then they have like 10% kind of like you can think of like a support beam on the corners, basically. Uh, they might have that little support beam, but it ends up being like 10% of the design, roughly something like that. Anyways, uh, then they might have the doors in the middle. Okay. And they have a little spacer here at the bottom spacer here at the top, another like 10%, perhaps maybe some other values there. Um, but these areas here, uh, they might eventually get inset individually, something like this, and then um, more or less pushed in, in this area. Right. So I can separate these as a new object. I'm just going to extrude them back out real quick. And scale them. Oh, you know what? Actually, uh, before we do that, let's make sure they're a new object. Let's add some loop cuts to these. So we'll do, um, I guess, nine loop cuts. Why not? This one needs to be nine as well. Okay. So I can grab all these different edges here just using the cursor selector. I'm going to do a bevel and delete. So now I can just press E and extrude those out real quick. Okay. And if I wanted to, I can Alt Z, use the cursor selector, select all these. And I can go back through and maybe do a little chamfer on these or maybe um, a bevel. And you can see where this is going. So we have positive and negative space. So a lot of um, just architecture stuff in general does this, like um, either furniture or windows. Uh, and it's just, it keeps, you know, all kinds of stuff like this, right? I think you get the idea, though, of what's happening here. But basically, this is more or less... Um, exploring a little bit of negative space. So I can Alt E and extrude manifold in as well a little bit. And so now we have a couple different layers here. So different plane levels that um, we have going on as well. Right. And so that's going to look a lot more interesting. So you start doing that or thinking about those kinds of things as you're working on things. It doesn't matter what it is. You can start thinking about adding little elements like that, perhaps, or, you know, just arranging things in different manners. Uh, it's really up to you at the end of the day. Maybe, maybe don't always explore the negative space maybe um you know keep it flush and just do like a little um little boundary here a little ring right something like that perhaps um, certainly is doable and you can go ahead and do a cut real quick 45 degrees i hit a twice apparently or use x And later on, you could do like extrude manifolds down in like these areas. Well, that one didn't work actually. Anyways, so we won't do an extrude manifold there for now, but that's this video. That's what I wanted to talk about. All these different little things you'll find quite useful, I think, um, as it relates to, um, you know, just creating uh, whatever it is you want to create, really. You can start using these kind of principles to make things happen, right? So anyways, I'll check you guys out in the next video. Hope you enjoyed and uh, take care.